All right, now we have Level Cap Gaming talking about, is Star Citizen's next update a downgrade? I've been testing Star Citizen's next major patch and it has some big features like new hauling missions and persistent hangars that can function like a home base complete with fish tanks for decoration. But it's also becoming a controversial update due to the amount of busy work it's adding on top of Star Citizen's already laborious experience. Let's talk about what's new and if it's truly a fork in the road moment for what kind of game Star Citizen is going to become. Okay, so the first thing I noticed and you'll notice when spawning into 3.24 is that there's no longer a city or station inventory that you can just grab items from by hitting the I key. Hitting oh, shit, look at the size of these items in the UI, man. What? WTF. WTF is going on with these item sizes in the UI, man. Like, what is up? Now, I will still bring up your personal inventory, but nothing else. Instead, you'll have to go to these <laughs> inventory up, terminals that are located, well, kind of all over the place at the moment. They're even located okay. in your hab. All right, thank you. Thank you. Zav is saying apparently that happens in the 1440 and 2160 settings. Okay, okay. Room when you wake up, which is convenient. From here, you'll need to find the items that you want and then drag them from your main inventory UI over into your drawer UI and once delivered to the drawer you can then place them on your person. Now we've known for a while that station inventory was just going to be a placeholder for a different system but this new system is a bit cumbersome. The extra step of moving items to a drawer and then to your person is just weird and it feels like some sort of tech limitation that CIG hasn't been able to solve. It ends up being a little bit more than twice as much work as it was before to equip yourself with gear that you want. Especially since a lot of the equipping phase might be a little bit trial and error with seeing what fits and what it doesn't there's going to be a lot of back and forth with the drawer and with your inventory it's just kind of a pain in the butt yeah i mean this move this move adding steps is going to be a hard one to just write this one off to just because we need physicalized cargo when we don't have an economy that really demands the items to be physicalized because there's no economy there's no real economy yet right so i mean like I get why they had to physicalize the cargo. I understand because they're data sets now and, and you need persistent uh, assets in order for the economy to function so it can pull those data sets. Uh, however, since there's no true economy yet, it's kind of a hard one to just say, hey, deal with it until there's an economy. You know, like I get this is a necessary step moving forward for a functioning economy, but at the same time with the additional steps added to players for equipping items, it's going to be a hard one to write off to say, oh, well, it's for the economy and it's for the future of the economy. So, it, you know. Uh, generally, I don't mind. In fact, I like the terminal interaction, yeah, but yeah. it's comically yeah. laborious having to have the yeah. drawer in addition to it. I can only imagine somebody starting Star Citizen for the first time and getting stuck at just how to equip gear and get it from your inventory. Yeah. And once understanding it, going, uh, why is this like this? Having played tons of MMOs, action RPGs, survival shooters, all that have... I was explained, I was explained by an employee that it has to do with the fact of the, the information pool that is needed for uh, the economy. Now, I'm not quite sure. I would imagine since it came from an employee that that is correct, but I'm not quite sure if that is the 100% reason, just so you guys know. You know, I'm just letting you guys know all the facts that I know. Have inventory systems that you need to interact with conveniently, quickly, but potentially even realistically. None of them are quite as obscure as this one. It feels like CIG is once again trying to reinvent the wheel with something as simple as inventory management. Eventually, they'll probably mm -hmm. come back around to the realization that the wheel was actually pretty good in the first place. And hopefully this is a quick realization and not, you know, five to ten years down the road. Now let's move on to persistent hangers where you can have a hanger that remembers all the stuff you place in and around it and it leaves it there. 
potentially forever until you clean it up. And I should really call it Persistent Hangers Tier 0, which means it's the most basic implementation and functionality of this feature. Now these hangers are actually pretty cool. Naturally, I brought up some of the first ever rewards that I got in the game, oh, which I haven't wow. seen since I think the original hanger oh, modules wow. from like, I don't know. So this will take care of all the, the awards and rewards that you've gotten along the way through this journey, becoming from, from the very beginning of being a subscriber. So the now, hopefully, from what I'm hearing from, from Level Cap is that that issue is solved in all your... Uh, rewards are actually there now and physicalized since we have physicalized cargo. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I always liked the bling. I always liked having a place where I could be Scrooge McDuck and have my own, you know, launch pad into my gold mine. So like, that's kind of cool. But yeah, Aether's saying the biggest problem for me is looting. I'll have to try and live says Aether, but it seems they might have made looting not worth the effort. That definitely needs some sort of fix if it's bad. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Aether. 10-ish years ago, but I finally got my fish tanks back wow. with, um, well, no fish in them. I think uh -oh. CIG may need to do some <laughs> flare overhauls at some point since these items are very old. Time it is neat being able to set up a little area that I guess would be my hangout spot, but until they get some weapon and armor racks in the game, the functionality of these areas feel kind of cosmetic at this point, but I can not absolutely see them being pretty useful That'd down be awesome. the road. Let's go. Now, like nice your quality of life feature like is being able at. to spawn your ship from within the hangar. The entire floor opens up and your a ship emerges on an elevator with flashing lights and blaring alarm systems. And this does look extremely cool and I thoroughly enjoyed it the first two to three times that I saw it. However, by the fourth time, I was already thinking, I wonder if there's an upgrade I can make to, you know, speed up this whole ridiculous process. Also, if you call up the wrong ship by accident, which I absolutely... Well, here's the other thing, too. If you can call up... Hold on one process. second. Also, if you call up the wrong ship by accident... Like, if, if they can assign the hangar to your username, right? And they can code in, and again, this is just me speculating here and asking questions to the to the audience and to, and to those that might know a little bit more about this than myself. But if they can code the hanger to your username, couldn't you bring back the custom hangers essentially, like at the point of requesting your ship, and your ship uh it's, your ship gets assigned to a hanger, and then the hanger gets assigned to your username. Couldn't at that point, couldn't they code in like your old school hangers, like your Revel and York hanger, so that when you enter your hanger, you have your like your Revel and York hanger like ready to go? Like that to me seems like that would not be that hard of a thing to do. If they can assign the hanger to your username, they should be able to just say, okay, there's level cap, this is the hanger, give him the Revel in York, which is what he wants when he goes into his hanger. That would be fucking awesome. If you guys think that that's a good idea, put a one. I'm not quite sure how much work that would be, but that would make a lot more sense to me. You walk into the hangar they actually got when you bought your package. Why in the fuck can't you do that, right? Like, that makes most sense to me, you know? Right, right. Like, and more people are going to be happy because they get that cosmetic feel that they want. It's more unique. It's more their style. Yeah, it just, it just seems like the next step forward. Which right. I absolutely you paid for the did. Hanger. Right, you paid for the hanger. You walk in. It's assigned a username. You open the door, and boom, there's your Revel or York or your Arrowview or whatever hanger you want that you got that you bought with your package. It, it, boom, there it is, like old school days. Since now we got physicalized cargo and we can see the rewards, man, just like that would be like, oh, man, that would definitely grab me. That would be so sweet. If they could do that. Enjoy your yeah. two minute yeah, round so trip sweet. of waiting for the. It should be. It should be. Zab says, yeah, it's just a simple variable encoding. That's what that. Okay. And like, you know, I'm not a coder, but like Zav and I, you know, <laughs> like we're kind of right on the same page, Zav and I, you know, and Daf says, and pick which hanger you want. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. The elevator to come up <laughs> and then going back on the terminal and telling it to take the ship back and yeah, then that'd be awesome. the other ship that'd be up. awesome Betty. it gets pretty crazy pretty quickly yeah. and, and, and aether I, I i agree with you aether says that will pro probably happen eventually but they they uh have to get there in steps engineering wise right 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 i i imagine that's where it's going to go to 
Also, due to the yeah, terminal UI right, not right, being right. my favorite, it's pretty easy to call up the wrong ship by accident. Now, if you have Good a points, large ship, you will get a large hangar to fit that ship, whether or not you want to call up specifically a large ship. And the large hangars look very cool. The size is impressive, except when you realize that you have to run like half a mile to get to the cargo elevator. The larger hangar layout really doesn't make a ton of sense when it comes to convenience. We're going to need some gray cat vehicles just to drive around them, which might actually be the point. In fact, in the very first hangar modules, that's when they added the original little gray car buggy to get around it quicker because they were so massive. However, the size really just feels like more of a flex at the expense of actual convenience, and I think that's going to get old real quick. In fact, uh, unless you're operating a large ship, I think you would prefer a smaller hangar just so you can get around it quicker. Also, spawning a small ship on the world world's biggest elevator is pretty funny and then you have to run like half a mile to get to it now speaking of elevators the new cargo elevator is how you get your that's like old school though that totally reminds me of old school you remember that spawn on your ships in the center and be like the smallest ship ever the anger would be so fucking huge big stuff in game from the inventory anyway you use the terminal to access your inventory move it onto the elevator and then call it up <laughs> then you see your items there on the elevator and you can move it around and do stuff with it. Cargo containers are supposed to make this process easier, but to get a cargo container to put your Been stuff into, you have to buy them doing, on a space station, and Good the persistent you, hangers are on the planet right hey, now, Gaff, my which buddy, is uh, just a ridiculous oversight. CIG needs to let us buy these containers in the persistent hangers or just give them to us for free. There's already way too much running around in this game just to move one item from one place to another, and this is not helping. Also, the current limitation of only being able to buy an 8 SCU size container limits what you can fit inside Gator, the container and how many tonight, containers you're going to need to fill with stuff to move your things from one planet or station to another. Speaking as somebody who's played a lot of EVE back in the day, moving all of your items from one station to another to essentially relocate your home base was a common occurrence and something you needed to do a lot and it looks like star citizen could make it even more challenging than it was in eve and the downside uh, although this could be a step in the right direction by them doing this and the whole point of them doing this is to make it very eve like in terms of moving assets around so there's that side of the coin here too like i can i can imagine the whole reason for doing and physicalizing cargo uh and and assets like this is to get to that point to this is that it makes players want to sort of restrict their movement more explore less and just sort of hunker down in specific locations which i think would be kind of detrimental considering the amount of artwork and explorative nature of star citizen the the gameplay is going to disincentivize players from wanting to partake in all of that now bigger game concepts aside one of the cooler things about these elevators is that they tie into the new hauling missions there's an entirely new mission tree specifically for hauling and it is this. actual gameplay finally this is like the most mission system gameplay we've gotten in like i don't know a year of updates it's been a while I ran a few of these missions and I can say it's absolutely a good starting point for hauling, but it still leaves a lot to be desired and makes me question some of the current design choices. The way it works is you would accept a cargo hauling contract like you would with any other mission, preferably one that starts at your location or at least somewhere nearby. Then you go to the cargo elevator of this location, you call up the cargo that you need to haul, you move it into your ship manually with a tractor beam, then you fly your ship where it needs to be delivered, park it, and then move the containers onto the cargo elevator at that destination, and then lower the elevator and transfer the cargo into storage to complete the contract. It's pretty straightforward, point A to point B with loading and unloading. Though which, okay, what is your average amount of time for a cargo mission? That's that's a good question for people who've done this. Like, what would you say the average amount of time it would be to start and to end and get your reward from start to finish, accepting the contract and finishing the contract? What are we talking about here? Because if you compare it with salvaging, salvaging is paying pretty nice. 30 minutes? Okay. 30 minutes, and, like, I think Let's Go and a few others said in the chat that it's a $25,000 reward for medium rep. And I think we were up where thirty thousand to maybe forty thousand at the higher reps. Okay, so let's say twenty-five minutes. Let's just say like twenty-five minutes. 
And let's say you got like medium to high rep. 25 minutes for like a 30, 30K. 25 minutes for 30K. Let's just say that. So you got 25 minutes for 30K. Salvaging is going to pay you more than that. Like right off the bat, the salvaging is going to pay you more than that. Because you can salvage, you can salvage containers, certain ships. You got to know which ships to do. I think the MISC is a good one to salvage. Uh, I think the 400 is a good one to salvage. Uh, I'm trying to go off of the game play that I got into the past month. I'm trying to think what else I salvaged. It was good. I remember the MISC, the, the freelancers being good to salvage. I remember the 400s being good to salvage payout wise. I'm trying to think what other ship I liked to salvage because some of them were bugged. I thought the Hall E was going to, I thought the Hall, the Hall E, I thought the Hall was going to be good to salvage, but it ended up not being the best because I couldn't get anything out the door when I was trying to uh, tractor some of the uh, components out the door. It was just, it was a pain, it was painful, you know? So I think salvaging still pays more. Yeah, panels, you could salvage panels. Yeah, the panels pay nice. Yeah, the panels definitely pay nice, Bender. You're right. Yeah. Uh, Aether says, I don't know. For that much time, I feel the reward should be higher. I would agree with you, Aether, you know? Yeah, I mean, the amount of time that you're loading and unloading. Again, this really comes down to, again, like, they got to be a little less stingy with these rewards. You know, like, they got to kind of think about TVR. Like, we, 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 talked, we talked about this. In fact, it was two weeks ago. In fact, it was the, the economic uh, dude who wasn't Tony got on and talked about TVR, time versus reward. So, like, I think there just needs to be a slight bump in reward, you know? Again, why I love player dynamic, player-driven economies, because people decide what the value is eventually. And there's a whole other bunch of variables that figure into that. You know, like the, the, the area that you're delivering to, the, the items needed, the organization, and how bad they need said items. So there's a lot of variables that feed into that demand. You know, um, so player-driven economics would take care of you getting paid what you should get paid, you know? So oh, as you gain reputation, you'll gain increased payouts and the cargo hauling sizes required for the missions where you also need a bigger ship to move that cargo. And a lot of the missions take you to new locations like distribution centers and updated outposts on planets, which is a really nice way to get you around the solar system and see new locations. It's actually a perfectly designed system to get you to just see the beauty of Star Citizen from a less aggressive fighty standpoint. And and while again I think this is a good starting point for hauling, it's hard to ignore the fact that it's anything more than just a glorified courier mission at the moment. The list of quality of life upgrades and added features could be pretty long, at least my list would be. Firstly, the mission selection UI you, does not make it easy to see missions that begin at your current location or how far away the missions need you to go. There's a huge amount of filters and improvements needed for the mission sorting system to just make it easier to go from point A to point B and then from point B to point C quickly without having to do all this comparison research. The next quality of life update would be in the loading unloading process. I picked a ship that had a built in tractor beam because I really like the idea of being able to unload entirely from the cockpit without having to leave the seat of my ship. Unfortunately, we're not even close to that being a gameplay loop yet. Firstly, the tractor beams on ships do work, but they're very awkward at the moment. Pulling and pushing and scrolling yeah. and overshooting your target, yeah. the latency with aiming is really just not fun to use. It's yeah. much easier to just get out of your ship on foot with a tractor yeah. beam combined with your WASD movement. Yeah, what, what in the hell are up with the ship tractor beams, man? What is going on? They're so wonky. Controls, it's just more enjoyable to do it that way. Secondly, even if you do load everything onto the delivery platform from your spaceship, well, you still have to manually go over to the platform and then lower it and then transfer the cargo. And get that Cutlass Black tractor beam working already. I mean, they relocated that Cutlass Black tractor beam spot because it was in a really dumb spot. And anybody that owns a Cutlass Black knows what I'm talking about. That tractor beam spot was horrific. And then they moved the Cutlass Black tractor beam inside, which made a lot more sense. And now it doesn't even work. So make that thing work, for God's sake. Go on the UI to finish the mission. 
It'd be really nice if they could automate this process and have the platform just detect when you have the correct cargo loaded and then just complete the mission from that point. In fact, always having to unload makes it feel less like a trucking job and more of a couch delivery type job. You have to drive to the location and deliver stuff up a flight of stairs where I'd much rather focus on the driving part. And with the contract jobs, at least for the time being, you have to manually unload everything. There's no convenience. Okay, okay, but but here, I understand people bitching about this, but this is the realism that's going to be in the game, period. You know, like, or you can get them loaded faster. Is the feature in this patch uh, where you can have it loaded automatically with a timer and an upgrade in this patch? I got to play this week. I, I got to get in this week. I'm having, like, withdrawals. I haven't played in over a week. I'm like, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> I'm going to fucking play. Is that in? Yep, automatic loading is in. Okay, what's the premium on it, Aether? Is it, like, ridiculous? Is the premium crazy to have it automatically loaded? Let's Go says, I couldn't get it to work. Huh. Hmm. Burks reckons it's super cheap, says Aether. Hugh says, I heard him complaining about this specific thing, and I stopped watching the video on it, said Hugh. How are you doing, Hugh? What's up, Execute? I am definitely not dead, bro. Anytime you see me on, just, just, I bet I was, I've been on like in the month of July, dude, I was on like a lot. I, I've seen you on a few times too, dude. Yeah. Anytime, dude. Anytime. I've been uh, doing a lot of salvaging cause I never salvaged before. Like I was never into salvaging and I got that vulture last month, which, which, what is it this month, by the way? Like what did they switch to in August? I kind of, I kind of wanted a little bit more time with the vulture. What do they got going on in August? Yeah, my car died. Dude, like there's there's been a lot of things going on to execute. I've been bitching on the morning streams <laughs> continuously. <laughs> Hugh says, I am okay. Hope you and everyone else are well. It's good to see you, Hugh. I'm glad you're okay, bro. <laughs> Let's go saying he can't get out of the elevators in the latest PTU patch. Sav says, execute show the viewers his matrix setup. Your matrix setup? What is going on over there? Is execute going Neo mode, Sav? <laughs> Drop your trailer here and move on to the next mission type gameplay. It's tractor beam out about 60 to way, 20 go boxes. My buddy execute load them over somewhere to and then a shout move out a while ago. Some you people are going to love this. Some people are going to hate it. Really I'm good, a little dude. bit in the middle, but it's not quite the trucking dream I had imagined for Star Citizen. Now, sadly, the missions themselves are... Okay, okay, but level cap seriously, though, bro. Like, this just got in the game, okay? So just give it some time. Like, take everybody take a breath. This just got in the game. It's only going to matter. I'm going to tell you when this is going to matter. Again, I say this all the time. This will matter more when it's tied to an economy that works. When there is a player... Well, it won't be player-driven. It'll be AI-simulated demand. But hopefully they can make it look like humans are actually wanting to buy things enough for me to, to say, okay, this economy works. And star sim, which is the new word for quantum, uh, actually gives us this AI replicated demand that we're supposed to get where we can't recognize the difference between uh, AI simulated demand and, and player driven demand. I'll believe that shit when I see it because I don't see what I want to see from the, the NPC or the AI uh, reactions from uh, pilots, nor do I see it from uh, FPS units. So, you know, I, I don't have that much faith that they'll be able to do it with the economy to tell the truth, but let's get to the point where, where it actually happens. So it will get exciting when the economy is the economy that we have wanted for years. That's because you're, you're buying the cargo that somebody needs, whether it be NPC or whether even better, it be player. I always love it when it's for a player. If I got the cargo and I got a contract with players, in EVE, for instance, lots of traders in EVE where they got contracts from other organizations, corps in the alliance that needed said items, ships, weapons, for a war, and those items needed to be delivered ASAP. Now, put yourself in a cargo hall or a cargo ship freighter. You got these goods, right? And you're delivering it to them. You're getting paid fat money. 
because they need that to fight in a war, that means the world to you. Then there's meaning. So what level cap's talking about, I get. Because you need to feel the connection. As an industrialist, as a trader, you need to know that like what I have in my hold is needed. I got to get it. To, I got to get it there. And they're going to pay you good. That's when the game becomes really fun for traders in the verse. That's when it gets fun. This, this is all a placeholder right now. This is all placeholder. This is getting us to that point. Pretty devoid of, well, anything interesting. There's no NPCs to receive the cargo at the destination. Nobody to direct you where to put stuff or make idle chit chat about what this cargo is being used for. This type of set dressing NPC stuff could really be used to make the world feel alive. And at the moment, it's just stark and empty. The description. Again, of course, of course it is. But like, uh, like this was not in the game, motherfucker. Listen, level cap. Uh, listen, nothing gets level cap. Nice guy. But like this shit was not even in the game. It's in the game now. You understand? So there's that progress that's, uh, that people say does it's not happening. But like, let's, let's let that sink in for a moment. This is the progress that people are telling you is not happening. Okay. Now it's in the game. Progress. Okay. That everybody says isn't happening. And now... It's empty. Well, of course, we're not where we need to be for this to be meaningful yet. This is all placeholder shit, okay? But it needs to be in there so that we get to that point when we're doing the trading and we got those instances where it's life or death, that's when it means something. And this means a hell of a lot more. And it's not empty because it's in the game. It's a design feature that's in the game that you absolutely need to get to the point we're all trying to get to. You guys get what I'm trying to say or am I the only person in the room right now? <laughs> you, you understand? Like the thing that makes me the, the, the most mad are when content creators are bitching that there's no progress. Here's the progress. It's put in the fucking game. We have the progress. Now the progress is in there. They bypass the fact that the progress got put in there and they, and they don't talk about the fact that they, that they, they just saw the progress. They, they don't say, oh my God, there's progress. And then they say when it's in there that it's empty. Thank you so much for that. Let's go. Thank you. I appreciate you. It just that's what gets me frustrated. This is nothing against level cap. This is just against the entire content creation fucking genre. Like like, like you know, I guess it's easier I guess it's easy for a reactor to talk about this. <laughs> but I, I get to watch videos all the time that you guys want, want me to watch. It's my biggest gripe is right, I'm an enhancer. Thank you, Red Bear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm enhancing. This is what makes me the most mad, and it should make you mad as well. You're all being tricked. I mean, like you you're all being tricked. I think the smartest of you in here, which is most of you, look at this and you guys get it, which is why you're here, which is why you're on DG360 because you're watching it and you're like, these motherfuckers were just saying there's no progress. Now there's progress. They're not mentioning anything about the fact that the, 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 the progress happened. They're just going to talk about how now that the progress is in, which they won't call progress, is now empty, which it's like, <sighs> it's maddening. It's maddening. Maddening. <laughs> thank, thank you, Execute. That explosion came from Execute's pants, just so everybody knows. He said, uh, I'm feeling enhanced right now in my pants, especially that explosion was a mic inside of uh, Execute's pants. Just that, you know, that's a crazy big explosion, bro. Crazy big explosion. <laughs> Descriptions of the missions are really basic. There's no voiceover lines for, for anything you, in them or NPC <laughs> interactions at all for that matter. And as far as I can tell, the hauling missions don't evolve into more dangerous or interesting missions. I was hoping for something that would let you choose between a really basic, yeah. low cost, low risk Time mission and money, one that you know? says, hey, we need this cargo, but you got to fly through an asteroid field and there's pirates. So now you get to dodge and worry about combat at the same time. Something to increase the price and the interesting <laughs> aspect of that mission but at the moment it just seems super super basic again yeah. a good starting point of course it's super basic and yes it is a good starting point so let's just leave it at that and move on level cap like for god's but sake but like the rest of cig's tier zero rollouts <laughs> for their features they can feel quite uh whelming
Now, something I haven't played around with yet is that cargo grids on spaceships will lock items into place now. So seats, vehicles, any items you could find could be a fish tank, actually. I'm sure some funny gameplay will come from this, especially yes. with the ships that have exterior. And we're going to watch that. And we're going to watch that here at Star Citizen After Dark. I got a video from Becky one of you guys wanted me to watch, and I, I can already tell you, I'm sure Becky's playing with this shit right now. Cargo grids. Um, people could be sitting in seats on the outside of a ship flying around, which I'm sure will happen soon. Anyway, patch 3.24 is going to be a weird update. If you like hauling, and I do like hauling, there's actually now gameplay and a progression tree and things get more expensive and bigger and that's cool. The persistent hangers are neat at best, more silly than functional at the moment. And I and they should assign the hangers that we purchase to you know that we purchase through packages they they should let us assign what hanger it is like old school they should be able to code it like aether said it's a lot harder than it would appear to be on the surface i'm sure but that is something i think that the, we're going into that direction item management is about to get a lot more cumbersome than it already is i fear especially with the basic stuff like inventory the learning curve for new players is just going to get more unpleasant than I'm sure it already is. And it'll also serve to bog down veteran players who feel like they're just being held back by unnecessary time sinks in between the actual gameplay. Granted, yeah, again, like according to uh, a, a SIG employee, it's a necessary step towards uh, data sets for servers to pull information from for, for physicalized cargo. So I understand the step that is being taken here, but it is just hard to write that off for us as veterans because it is added steps for us to uh, equip and get things ready to go and it seems more of a hassle so yeah that is a problem that is a problem this is a controversial topic and i know some people are for it and against it i'd actually be curious to hear what your thoughts are on this whole sim everything approach to star citizen okay and and i did level cap and good good video level cap you know, just so you know, bro, I'm, you know, I'm not just, I'm not talking just about level cap on things. You know, there's times that I get upset, uh, but you know, like he's doing what he does, man. He's just, he's a content creator. He's just, you know, doing what he does. And the thing is, is I'm doing what I do. And, uh, th these are the things that I, when I'm on stream, I just like to let everybody know where my, where my mind's at because I do get frustrated that the loudest voice out there, which by the way, is not the majority of people. A lot of the times the quiet voice, the ones that don't say anything are the majority of people. They don't get their panties in a bunch and they just kind of bypass the drama. So the loudest voices out there usually aren't the majority of people. And the loudest voices are like, Oh, there's no progress. And, oh, you know, like everything's like clickety clack. And, and, and I, I guess after a while, it's just like, I'm just like, God, people. I mean, like tonight with Inside Star Citizen on the, on the Inside Star Citizen review, we saw, we saw fire. Propagation of fire, fire design was fantastic. I loved what I saw on Inside Star Citizen. And yet you'll still find people complaining. And it's just, it's like, it's beyond me. Didn't we want realism? Didn't we want realism in this game? Don't we want this to be a very realistic space sim? I thought that's what we signed up for. And I like the fire. And I like the fact that the fire doesn't go on the outside of the fucking ship like the Accolade on Disney. Fucking what they're doing to Star Wars, it's horrible. <laughs> like they're, they're, they're following science. You understand? I like that when you open up the cargo bay doors that the fire can be vented out. Science. Yes, sir. You're not going to hate me. I like that the materials burn at different rates. Science. Yes, sir. You're not going to hate me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I also like the fact that I know for a fact that when it's introduced, it will be buggy as hell. <laughs> and I will deal with it because I know that over time things will improve because I've seen the progress. All right. Yeah.